Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Mouth to anus. How do we determine where the gastrointestinal problems lie? So let's get right into it. First of all, when we have a patient that comes in our door, we're looking to see if they can smell and taste. So it's important to evaluate that, right? Oftentimes it's a neglected aspect of a physical exam when you have a gastrointestinal issue. Saliva production. When you open the mouth and you look in their mouth, the tongue should be clear, red, pink, and wet with saliva. Are they able to chew? Do they have issues with muscles of mastication? Or do they have issues with the temporal mandibular joint where they can't chew properly? Swallowing. These are the individuals that come in and they have uh, difficulty swallowing because of vagal nerve issues, or they just keep chewing and chewing and chewing and never really swallow. This is the slow eater. HCL production can be influenced by metabolic conditions, it can be influenced by infection. Pancreatic enzyme release is also another one, so that can be also neurodegenerative and metabolic. Gallbladder release of bile. This is one that can be issues with gallbladder sludge or insufficient contraction. Sometimes autoimmune disease can create this. Duodenal microvilli or blunting of the microvilli can be related to an autoimmune disease uh, or food reactions. Intestinal permeability or quote unquote leaky gut can be related to food also um, and some antibiotic use and so forth. Ileocecal valve. This is a valve where um, the prevention of fecal matter or uh, bacteria from the large intestine to the small intestine is prevented by the ileocecal valve. Oral tolerance is these are the individuals that come in and they can only eat maybe 10 different types of foods. Anything else they eat, they have a reaction to. And it's because of a restrictive diet they've been following for long periods of time. And over time, they eliminate foods rather than add foods back in, and they lose oral tolerance. Also, you have what we call microbiome diversity issues, and then you're going to have colon reabsorption issues of water, and then excretion of fecal matter. So we like to look at it from north to south, mouth to anus. In this case, really brain to anus. Okay? So let's get, look at the mechanism again. Smell and taste is neurological. Saliva production can be neurological or sometimes medication will prevent saliva production. Chewing can be neurological because muscles of mastication can be infected, uh, affected and TMJ or temporal mandibular joint dysfunction. Swallowing can be neurological, especially with the vagus nerve. HCL production can be really metabolic, medications, food, infection, even neurologic. HCL production, let me give you an example. If you have an H. pylori infection of the gut, it will reduce your stomach acid. If you take more HCL, it might be beneficial in the short run to help, but it's not going to get rid of the infection. So the underlying mechanism is an infection, so you need to get rid of the infection. Pancreatic enzyme release can be neurologic or metabolic, or gallbladder release of bile is also metabolic or autoimmune. Duodenal microvilli blunting, celiac disease, gluten sensitivity, inflammatory foods, autoimmunity, which is really celiac. Intestinal permeability can be related to overuse of antibiotics, inflammatory foods, infection can also do that. Ileocecal valve can be neurologic. Oftentimes when people have a concussion, they can develop SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So the signaling from the brain to these areas can be impacted. So neurologically it can be impacted and SIBO. Oral tolerance can be related to neurological issues, uh, SIBO and food or immunological issues. So diet, diversity, and medication will impact gut microbiome, okay? 
And then you have issues with constipation, diarrhea. Uh, this can also be related to food and metabolic conditions. Constipation can be actually uh, a neurodegenerative process that can be occurring. So when we look at this and we summarize, is it neurological when a patient comes in? Is it infection that's causing the problem? Is a metabolic issue like diabetes or metabolic syndrome? Is it an immune dysregulation where you don't have enough white blood cells to mount an attack uh, against an infection? Is it an autoimmunity? If this is an immune dysregulation of your own system which recognizes your self tissue or your own tissues as a foreign invader and your body attacks it. And that's autoimmunity. All right. So let's get into some cases. So before I get into this case, if you find value in these videos, I'm really excited to announce that we will be releasing a real comprehensive foundational modules on the topics that you are interested in. I'm going to link the waitlist um, sign up uh, below in the description. Go ahead and sign up and you'll receive a complimentary document uh, about magnesium. However, this foundational module will fill in the gaps that are missing for a lot of you uh, people who watch these videos. It'll fill in these little gaps where you have a misunderstanding or confusion about what to do. So it's a very important foundational module that we will be presenting very, very soon. Okay, so get on the wait list. So case study. If a patient comes in and they go, I can't smell very well. I don't know if my wife is cooking and I don't know what she's cooking. I can smell it, but I don't know what it is. They have issues swallowing. When you look in their mouth, the soft palate, when you go ah, 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 doesn't really move on repeat testing. So maybe you do it two or three times, it's fine, but four or five, six times they go and the palate doesn't move. That can be an issue with the vagal nervous system. HCL release, okay? And then you have a pancreatic issue, pancreatic enzymes that are low, lipase, amylase. Intestinal permeability can occur, right? Leaky gut or ileocecal valve issues. Or you have constipation that's occurring. So when a patient comes in like this, we have to ask what might be the possibility, right? Think about it. I said it could be metabolic, neurologic, immunologic, autoimmunity, right? Um, what would this patient be? Think about it for a second. I like to think this patient is probably neuro or neurological patient where they have issues with smell, swallowing, and digestive issues. Uh, they might be early Parkinson's, degenerative Alzheimer's, dementia type patient. So this could be a neurological patient. Sure, other factors might play into it, but this is probably where we're gonna start. We have another patient that comes in, they have gallbladder release issues, okay? Uh, release of bile, uh, duodenum microvilli absorption issues, okay? And then gut microbiome issues, right? When we look at a patient like this, hmm, this could be probably metabolic, or it can be maybe autoimmune. So in the initial consultation, we need to figure out where the problem might lie, and then do testing specific to what we think is the clinical diagnosis. So we don't want to just go, oh, this patient came in, they have this problem. Let's give them uh, HCL, pancreatic enzymes. Let's give them leaky gut supplements and this fancy um, gut um, soil-based uh, probiotic. Now let's give them all this stuff and see if this, this will get them uh, better. That's not the way to approach this. You want to be very specific. You want to have what we call the clinical decision-making tree. You go down from mouth to anus and figure out where the problem might lie all right and you look into all the different factors and then address it more specifically so that patient can get better and get to the underlying mechanism all right 
My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.